Hello everyone and welcome to episode 46, Still Climbing. Uh, we are not going to be doing any more cleanup in this episode, we're actually going to do something new. We're going to try and start working on the shop for the game. We're not going to do everything because we've got a bunch of kind of setup we need to do for it first. Um, but we're just kind of going to get all the, uh, the basics of it together. Um, and then we'll actually come to making the items that you can buy probably in the next episode. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give these uh, buildings uh, some rooftops. Um, in my sort of testing for this and scripting this episode, I think I already extended the length of this building because I know I had them a bit asymmetrical before, but I've made them the same just so that our, our rooftop can easily fit on top. I've kind of drawn specifically for it. If you have a more modular tile set, then feel free to keep it the different size or it really only matters if you've been following along exactly with what I've been doing. Either way, the first thing I'm going to do is come to the sprites folder, right click in sprites and hit create sprite from images. And I'm going to grab the s rooftop.png. Um, literally just looks like a little rooftop. And the reason I'm bringing this in, you might think, well, Sean, what, what the heck? You've got that in s tiles, don't you? You have that as a thing. Don't worry about it. Um, you'll see what we're going to do with this in a moment. Um, I'm first of all, just going to name it s roof. Um, and uh, we, we don't need to change the origin point or anything like that. Um, just leave it as it is, uh, assuming you're using the same ones I'm using. If you're not, then well, don't worry about it. Just make these make these buildings look however you want them to look. Um, I'm going to go to Tiles Upper, and I am going to drag um, a just over the top of this whole section here of tiles, and then uh, oops. I'm going to grab that and <laughs> set that down to one. We want one of it. And then that just gives me this, which I've designed to be able to just click over the top of that um, so that we have a nice tile set on over that. And then if we go to our coal layer, our collision layer, I'm going to wrap just the entrance way in this because we don't want you to be able to walk in here. We're going to put a transition here anyway, but just to be sure. In fact, we could just block out the whole thing if we wanted to. There we go. All right. Now, the reason I brought in that other sprite is because um, we're going to want to put a roof on this building as well, but it's going to uh, behave a little bit differently because we still want you to become, be able to come inside here, but I'm not going to have it be a separate room, all right? This one's going to send you to a different room. Just, you know, we'll show you how that works. But I also want to show you how to do just like um, rooms that are still just part of the same world. You could argue it's going to feel a bit inconsistent in this specific game that you go into here and it trans uh, teleports you to a different room. And if you go in here, it doesn't, and we just sort of see um, the room instead. But I just want to show you both kind of ways of doing that sort of thing. Now, there's a few ways to do it, and the way I've done this sort of thing in my own games before is to been to make a tile layer um, with, again, these tiles over the top and made it so that when the player is touching um, any pixel that contains like non-empty tiles from that layer to take that whole layer and make it transparent. That's one way you can do it. Um, but for the sake of keeping this simple, I'm going to show you how you can just do it with objects, um, which makes it um, even simpler still, and also makes it so that um, you don't have to worry about either having multiple layers or having that one layer like go transparent no matter where you're touching it. Like if you had multiple houses, you wouldn't want to go into one and have the roof disappear for all of them at once. Or may I don't know, maybe you would, but th this avoids that issue by doing it with objects, okay? Um, so I'm going to come into objects and I'm just going to make a new object called O roof. We're going to assign that sprite we just made. Um, pretty easy to find it. Um, S roof. Um, let's move that away and we're going to add the create event. Um, let's just uh, make this nice and big. Um, there's not really a lot of code in here. I'm just going to write depth equals negative uh, B box uh, bottom. Uh, minus eight. All right, um, that is just uh, basically the, like that, that's the way we normally do depth on a lot of things. It's just to take the bottom of it and make it that you know, depth the negative of that the the y position in space. Um, we'll just give it a little bit of an extra buffer here. Uh, that's just to make sure the player like shows up underneath it when they walk into when when they walk underneath it. All right, that it, it is showing on top of them and they don't like draw over the top of the roof itself. All right. Then um, I'm going to add the, to be fair, the moment you touch it, it turns transparent. So it's semi-optional, but I just prefer to have it in there. All right. We're going to go to the step event next, and I'm just going to paste this in, and uh, we'll just maximize this to take a look at it. All right. Um, it's really, really simple. Okay. Um, we're just checking if the blair is actually touching 
this object, just any of its collision mask, and you could define that in the sprite to make it match up cleanly. I'm just going to leave it. Whatever the default is, is probably close enough for what we want. I'm not going to fuss too much about it, but you can go in and really like uh, fine tune that. Um, but assuming like we're touching the collision mask, um, uh, we're going to make our image alpha uh, whatever is biggest out of uh, itself minus 0.04 or 0.25. So that means it's going to slowly approach the number 0.25 by 0.04 every single frame, okay? Um, and the reverse of that, uh, going up by 0.04 um, to 1, using min, so it returns whichever is smaller, okay? It's just a very simple way to make a number approach uh, from one number to another. Um, so let's give that a try. We're just going to come to our village now and grab the roof, uh, go to the instances layer, and I'll just stick that right on top. That's why I've not moved the, uh, the origin point, because I just sort of drew it with the tile like layer in mind okay so that was always the top left and we, we did it on a 32 by 32 or 16 by 16 grid so it was very easy to just drop that perfectly to sit on top there and then we can also go ahead and um, just stick some pots in the room one of the limitations of this I guess is if you don't have this on its own layer or whatever it becomes a bit of a you know like clicking things on top of and underneath it become a bit of a pain you might have to move it out of the way and so on that does become an issue for you. Maybe look into the tile method. I might do an independent tutorial on that another time. Um, but for the sake of this series, we're just going to stick with the, the simple object method. All right. Um, I will just run that just to see how, how this feels now. Um, because of the depth modification, we should see that those, yeah, those um, pots like show up underneath there. When we come into here now, you see the roof like disappears when we come in. And it's just a nice little transition to show us just sort of walking into the house. And uh, works pretty well. You can see it's drawing over the top of us because it's a little hard to tell, but you can see just like where the, like the beam color is coming on top. So we can see the depth is working correctly. And when we come out, it's all fine as well. So we can still sort of stand slightly above it on the outside. So that works just as well. Um, this one is now just empty. Obviously, this doesn't look great when we're sort of stood here, um, like stood like over the top of this. It looks like we've gone up in space, but we're going to have the transition be here. Um, so hopefully when we twitch this, it'll just, you know, it's going to go into our transition. It'll be fine. Slight issue with that that we will look into fixing another time, but um, yeah, we'll talk about that when we come to it. So I'm going to make a new child room of our parents. So I'm going to right click that, hit child room, um, and just call this our shop. You know, it's taken so long making this series, I actually really don't like this method anymore of making child uh, rooms of uh, a particular parent one. I don't think the inheritance stuff in Gaming actually works particularly well, but in theory it's a good idea. So <laughs> and we're going to try and be consistent and keep working with it. Um, but I've actually come to regret it in Pokey Poke. I find this is, because it also inherits depth and things by default, it actually, for me, causes more problems than it solves. Um, but your mileage may vary. Um, I, I think it's a good idea in theory, um, <laughs> which is why we started doing it. I'm not sure I'm a fan anymore. Uh, anyway, our shop is not going to be uh, particularly complex. I'm going to come to Tiles Main, first of all, get that uh, Tiles um, layer selected, and we're going to just draw the room. It's going to be a bit of a TARDIS, and that it's, you know, bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, but, you know, we're just, we're making a video game at the end of the day. It doesn't have to be um, super realistic. It's already got talking cats in it. Um, I'm just going to draw this. I'm going to move that player object as well. Like, it doesn't matter where the player goes, but and I'm, I'm sure we've talked about this before. It can be kind of helpful to just place them somewhere or use them as a, a, a way to work out the coordinates for where your transitions, etc., are actually going to send you. Um, so after we've done this, I'm just going to come to the tiles upper, which also has that. Uh, well, we're going to draw in this table. So where our objects are actually going to be, we're just going to sort of lay them out in a little row, like the bomb, the uh, the bow, and the hook shot. So you can kind of pick between them. We'll have like the shopkeeper just sort of stood around here. It's just going to be a bit of a, a signpost essentially, um, but uh, look a bit fancier. We'll take him. Let's just turn the grid. Do sixteen by sixteen. Not sure. Probably should have done that by default. And, uh, and we'll just place him. If you ever want to place off the grid, I'm not sure if I've covered this, but you just hold Control. Uh, you hold control while you're placing something, and you can just move it off of the grid. If you just want to get really precise like that. I'm um, just putting him there just so that, you know, we get those coordinates there, which will be handy for us when we do the transitions. Uh, before we do that, though, um, let's come to the coal layer, and let's just draw this in. There we go. Like that. 
Um, feel free to, you know, you can do this as well. Obviously, you don't, it doesn't really matter once it's beyond areas you can actually get to. You can cover all of this if you are really paranoid, but i um, pretty sure the player's not going to be able to get out. Uh, next, we're going to do the area transitions. Um, so I'm going to come to Assets, go to the Instances layer, drag a Room Exit, just drag it under there. We remember how to set these up. It's just coming to the variables here. Um, and we just have to define the coordinates in the target room. The target room is obviously going to be our uh, village. Um, and as for the coordinates, that's actually come back to our village. Um, use the player in here as a handy one as well. And just sort of place place you about where we want to end up, somewhere like there. 120, 106. Okay, and we can then just put it uh, put it back. Wait, is that where he was to begin with? That's a weird position. Let's just sort of move him there. Look like we're kind of in the wall. Anyway, um, oh, I've already forgotten that now. I've got to send him back again. What was it? What? Uh, that that'll do. To be, oh no, a bit lower, a bit lower. Oh yeah, it was one twenty. It was one twenty. One twenty. One oh four. One oh five. I think it was one twenty. One oh five. I don't delete him. God, what am I doing today? Right. Ah, uh, shop. One twenty. And one oh five. Are those coordinates? And then that's all we need to do there. Uh, close that and check his coordinates, um, which are 152, 143. Let's actually try and remember that this time. 152, 143. And we'll place another room exit here. And set the variables on this accordingly. 152, 143. We did it, guys. And then the target room is going to be our shop. Okay, so let's just give that a quick test now. Um, make sure we're not forgetting anything super obvious and just make sure this works. Okay, it comes into here, we can come out of that. Obviously you'll notice there's a bit of an issue. Like you keep walking and it looks kind of dumb going behind there. Now you could do something fancy with that where, you know, maybe you use um, an, another tile layer that goes above the, uh, the player or something like that, or, you know, another object maybe that sits above the player so that when they walk into here, they go under it and disappear properly. Um, I think, honestly, probably the better solution, because there will be sometimes you just want it. It's bit like, also the same is true of the cave, if you remember. And that walking into it looks a little bit weird. Uh, oh, why is the boulder not there? That's weird. Um, well, maybe, I've, maybe I'm accidentally making this on an old episode file or something like that. It doesn't seem to be there. Um, but either way, you remember that this, you can see just there um, when you, you, you come up into there. Don't worry about the missing boulder. I'll, I'll sort that out in the, the source code afterwards. <laughs> I'm sure I've just accidentally loaded an old one or something. But you can see how we just come up there. It's, it's really easy to solve. We're not going to cover it in this episode. But uh, you, you should be able to fix that yourself by now. All you would need to do is make it so that... Uh, um, you you don't always uh, at the moment we make it so you just kind of carry on walking whichever way you are walking all you'd have to do is so when you trigger this you could have a flag in here in, in your room exit that says keep walking and um, there's a boolean um and if that's true just uh oh, oh sorry if it's false and you make it true by default i guess um if it's false uh just make it so the player's speed h speed v speed or etc just set to zero um and, and that'll make them stop as, as they go in there, okay? It's a nice effect sometimes that like when you're walking off the screen, but I think it's more trouble than it's worth to get to look right on some of these light like, rooms and stuff like that. So you might want to do without it. Or, as I said, you could look into doing something fancier where, you know, you draw the roof up top, over the top of them and so on, but we don't have time for that, <laughs> okay? Okay, let's just clean up a little before we get to the next step. I'm going to make a new workspace, hit close all but this, uh, which just gets rid of all that stuff. Uh, we're going to make the shopkeeper. Okay, um, it's not going to be very complicated because, as I say, well, the main we're going to interact with buying things is they're going to be little items on the shelves that work a bit like a Zelda shop where you just sort of walk up to a thing. But we're going to have an NPC that sits in the room and maybe says something helpful. Okay, um, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to find. Oh, well, we're going to bring in a sprite first of all. That's a good point. We'll right click um, somewhere near this questy hat. Um, does that actually matter? I've never actually noticed. I've always done it thinking it will come in afterwards. But if I bring that in... No, it brings them in at the bottom anyway. I don't know why I bother doing that. <laughs> S shopkeeper. Um, and then we're going to drag him up to uh, where that is. I've got a new keyboard, by the way. And my enter key is smaller than I'm used to and has a slash above it. Like that. So if you see me keep putting slashes on the end of things by mistake, um, it's because I keep hitting the slash button. 
um, instead of the enter key, which is now smaller and below it. I'll get used to it eventually, um, but for now we're going to probably see a lot of that. Anyway, call him S Shopkeeper, and we're going to bring up S Questy Hat as well, um, because we can use him as a reference for where the origin should go. And it should be right around here. If we just sort of we, we look there, you can see it's on in the exact same spot. Um, just use the visual reference, that's uh, it's the easiest way to get it done. Um, and you can see how he works, it's just another one of these. Okay, he's got a cool little monocle, it only shows up in a couple of directions, but uh, he has a cool little monocle, because I don't know. I just felt the shopkeeper should have a monocle and a cool hat. FPS doesn't matter, of course, he's just directional. Uh, then we're going to make an object for him. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to duplicate um, OQuest NPC. Because he's mostly set up the same way. And we'll call this uh, OShopKey. And then we'll open this. We'll change the sprite, first of all, to be the new sprite we've just brought in as shopkeeper. And then we're going to come to the create event, which is the only thing we've actually made different here code-wise um, from uh, basically a signpost, which was to set image speed to zero because we used the direction based on activating it. And then we're going to get rid of this line here. Um, if I just shrink that so you can kind of see the whole line at once. I suppose I could have maximized this, but there you go. Um, just this line here that was talking about giving him the hat if the hat quest, obviously that's not relevant to our shopkeeper so we can just go ahead and get rid of that and then i think we actually set up the variables for the quest nbc in the room didn't we um uh, other than like collision and stuff like that we didn't set the activate script and yeah cool they're just blank so now we can just come and place him into our shop and it, i'm just going to place him like here um uh, kind of want to be able to see the monocle maybe we should just put I'm on frame minus one, or, or rather, probably keep it positive. Frame three by default. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it probably actually looks better facing to the right. But I just, I just wanted to see the monocle, uh, so I'm gonna put him on that frame. And I'm, I'm just gonna pop back to our village just so we can show ourselves a reminder of how these uh, MCs work. Oh, rather that I use an activate hat cat. That's a bit different. He has its own individual activate script. Um, this. Shopkeeper is going to be very simple. He's basically just going to be a signpost. So we can actually just look at the signpost for inspiration, not the roof. I told you, yeah, clicking on roofs because it overlaps thing. That is the tricky thing about doing that method. Anyway, just get the signpost up. And you can see how we did this here. We set the activate script to just be new text box and the activate arguments to be just whatever text we want. Um, potential responses can get baked in, of course, but like for the most part, it's just that's our... That, that, that's the text, and then the, the zero there for the background. Um, the background zero for a signpost, and I think it's two for most of our normal NPCs, right? And we've got that transparent one what we might use for other things um, on one. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna copy that just so um, just so we keep that formatting on the clipboard. It can just be a bit it can be handy um, just to make sure we get it right. Then I'm gonna pop back to uh, our shop and open up uh, our shop keep, open up the variables. And we'll just come right at the top here uh, to activate script, first of all. Set that to new text box, just like our signpost. And in activate args, we're just going to paste in that same message. Um, and then I'm just going to re uh, replace the string. Um, well, we'll set that to nothing, first of all. Change this 0 to 2, because we know we'll want that background. And then in here, I'm going to write um, your need some of my wares if you um and then backslash n for a new line i uh, want to make it through that scary cave uh backslash n uh oh yes uh, there you go um some uh, award-winning dialogue from me there um just Press to the end there, so you can just make sure that that comma and two square bracket are, in, are at the end there. Um, and that's all we need in there. I say one, I've probably pointed this out back in the dialogue episodes, but it is obviously a disadvantage of the way we're doing this, that we have to manually kind of put our line breaks in to avoid text going off the edge of the screen. A better dialogue system would kind of automatically do that kind of thing. Um, but as I've said a thousand times, we're trying to keep things simple and uh, do what we have time for, you know? Um, 
So uh, it's a thing to look into. If, if you want to scale this a lot more, I'm just sort of trying to point out as we go the little things you'll want to look into maybe improving or, or changing around with this stuff. All right. Uh, but anyway, let's run that now. Uh, we should be able to now just pop into here. We didn't actually set a collision mask for this guy, so it might be a bit weird. You might want to play out. Yeah, like you can't like walk into the top of him. <laughs> it's a bit, bit strange. I can't remember how we set it up with the other guy, but I'll leave you to do that however you want. Um, he's there, either way. You can talk to him, you'll need some of my wares if you want to make it through that scary cave. Oh yes, and we can talk to him from any side, as per usual. So he's just a little character who exists in here now, and he, ju he just says that one thing, you know, a very old school NPC style in that regard, right? Uh, he just says the one thing over and over again. That's all we're going to do in this episode. Um, sorry if it's not that exciting uh, as of yet. <laughs> we are getting there. Uh, but next episode we'll do the actual objects that you can uh, actually pick up and purchase. They're just, they're just slightly more involved and I figured, you know, I don't want to dump something heavy like that at the end of an episode. Um, so we'll, we'll get into it in the next one now. I've got all the setup done and out of the way. If you found this video helpful or you enjoy the work that I do, you should know it's only possible and only exists thanks to the help of my Patreon supporters. If you become one of them today, you can get access to my source code, videos before they even release, and have a vote on the topics that I choose to cover. Doing so will help me make more, better quality videos for the future that are free for everybody to watch. So thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and of course thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.